Have you ever wanted to take pictures of birds with your phone, but just couldn't reach far enough? Don't you wish you could get closer to those birds without having to spend the money on an expensive DSLR or mirrorless camera? If you said yes to any of these questions, then do I have the product for you? Introducing the DSLR to iPhone lens adapter. Using just a little bit of jank and a lot of duct tape, along with an old iPhone, you can make this adapter at home. I've paired this adapter to an old iPhone 4, which has a 1 over 3.2 inch sensor, giving it a 7.61 times crop factor. You can get some pretty extreme reach. I've just got a 70 to 210 telephoto and we're going to try to get some photos of some birds. So we've got a little chickadee that's come to visit us. We're going to use our adapter to take some photos of him. We've got our little chicken friend right up there. I photographed him a couple times before. He's quite friendly actually. So we're going to use our iPhone 4S with a 70 to 210 and even zoomed all the way out at 70 millimeters. Uh, he's going to fill the frame. The one downside to using this is there's no stabilization at all. So let's focus on the birdhouse here. And you can just see how much that's shaking around. If you'd like to know how to get excellent bird photos like these with your iPhone 4S as well, Come along, we'll go inside where we can learn how to make one of these. Welcome to my uh, messy little workspace here, where you can see some of the carnage of what's taken place last night when I built this. Um, first of all, I started with an old iPhone 4S. Uh, this one's Wi-Fi and power button do not work. The home button is finicky, so it's not a big loss here. This is just a really old spare phone that wasn't getting used. What I did, is I took the screws out of the bottom, took the back of the phone off, took the camera module out, and as you can see by all of this junk here, uh, this is actually pieces of the camera module. So let's take a closer look at that. So ignoring this little screw that fell out of the middle of the iPhone somewhere uh, when I took it apart, I'm not gonna bother putting that one back in. You can see there is some chunks of metal. I actually had to cut these off of the outside of the camera module which allowed me access to a little plastic bit that I pulled off and the lens was in there. Uh, it had some other metal brackets and stickers around it to kind of hold it in place as well as some of the wiring uh, most likely for the autofocus and then right here is the iPhone's lens itself. Uh, I actually think it looks pretty cool to be honest. And you can see the front element and what I thought was really neat about this is it almost looks like there's an aspherical element on the back of it. If you can see there in the reflections. So that's a pretty nifty little lens there. Maybe I'll try to get this adapted onto my mirrorless camera. See if we can get anything out of that. So yeah, we've destroyed the camera and we actually just took it straight down so it's just the bare sensor and I'll try to get some footage so I can show you that. And actually taking a look at the contraption I've made here, uh, there is a lot of duct tape. So we have used a whole bunch of jank here and a bunch of duct tape 
which is actually holding on some foam core board, which I have layered up so I can actually put a lens adapter into one layer and that will keep it attached onto the phone and you can actually remove the lenses. So you can see I've just got some squares of cardboard to keep it kind of staying in one spot. I've got an OM to E-mount adapter so I can E-mount doesn't really matter but I can use any E-mount sized lens by pulling the duct tape off the adapter. Uh, but for now I can just use any OM mount lens that I have. Uh, currently I'm using the 70 to 210 just because it's a spare lens that needs some fixing anyway. So didn't matter if something happened to that one. And as you can see I just tried to center the camera in the middle. And if you can take a close look you probably can't even see it. But there is no lens in there. The hole just goes straight down to the sensor. So when we put the lens on Just like that, it works like any other camera. And I've just got it so we can use the volume keys as the shutter. One of the cool things that I found out while doing this is just the crop factor. Like I said, it's a 7.61 times crop factor on the iPhone 4S. Uh, that means that if I put on my 400 millimeter lens, this will actually become a 3,044 millimeter lens, giving us just insane reach. And of course, the quality is uh, perfect. If you'd like to do this at home, you don't even need that many tools. I needed a screwdriver to take the screws out of the bottom of the iPhone, as well as a small Phillips screwdriver. And I actually barely even used the tweezers and spudger. I did everything else with a really old utility knife. Super easy. Of course, you're going to make a bit of a mess. But, you know, it's, it's all in fun, right? So if you've got a really old phone that you just don't care about at home, it's a fun little project. Should also work with like a point and shoot digital camera as long as you can get the lens off and straight down to the sensor. I tried with this one, I couldn't figure out how to get the lens off very easily and decided to go with the iPhone instead. But should you do this at home? Though it only took me a couple minutes, I wouldn't recommend this. The quality of the photos just really isn't good. The smaller sensor really can't get that much detail, especially with the age of the sensor. It's just blurry. And especially on an iPhone with no control over the shutter speed, really didn't produce that great of results. Uh, I wasn't expecting it to. And again, this was just all for fun. So if you'd like to get one of these adapters, you can't. There's no way I can sell them. I don't have a 3D printer, which is why I used the foam core board. But if you do want to do this yourself, I still wouldn't really recommend it. Though it was a little bit of fun, you're not gonna get good photos. I'm sure with something like a 3D printer, you can make an adapter that works even better, but you're still gonna have to tear apart something, uh, an old phone camera, something like that to get right down to the sensor. And why would you want to do that when you could just put the lens onto a cheap mirrorless camera? Uh, which is exactly what I do in day to day. I just use a Sony A5000 I got for cheap, but you know, uh, it's fun to do little experiments. If you want to see more experiments like this, then why not give a like on the video or subscribe? Comment down below if you'd want to try something like this. I think as a proof of concept, this actually worked quite well. And I t did manage to get some photos of a bird, which is what I wanted to do with a phone without it being just like, really far away as you've seen in the clips from the first of the video so thanks for watching until next time have a good day